As beautiful as Utah is, there are chilling stories of the past. Just like all the West, the history is unforgiving, and in turn, allegedly, has created paranormal hotspots. Yeah, this place is kind of creepy. From haunted trails to skinwalkers, skinwalker ranch, aliens and ghosts, allowing them disappearing. In today's video, I'm going to go in alone myself to see these places. And check if there's any credibility to these stories. I'm Victoria Rose and welcome to the adventure. Hello, my name is Victoria Rose. I travel around solo and live in my 1998 Jeep Cherokee for the moment. I am in an out in the middle of nowhere place, a very, very small town called Hanksville, Utah. And it's so small, there's probably, there's one gas station and I do want to show it to you because it's built into a rock. The reason that we're here though is not for Hanksville. It's a little outside of Hanksville. And this is gonna start off the kind of eerie vibes of this video. I got a lot of positive response from my ghost town video, kind of exploring the ghost towns. Now I wanna do a video that is a little bit different, more of the, uh, the haunted side of things in Utah. I don't believe in haunting and paranormal stuff. I have a very kind of energy-based, scientific, quantum physics-based look and outlook on things. But I do think the backstories are interesting. Number one, because you get to know about the people that passed away and the history of the places and why people say the place is haunted. So I'm gonna to try to visit some places that are supposedly some of Utah's most haunted places. But the twist is that these places aren't buildings. These are gonna be more nature-y places kind of out in the middle of nowhere places. So that's what we're gonna do in this video. Before we get into it though, I wanna show you Long Dong Silver. This is a very like spacey, sci-fi, eerie type of looking place, like the end of the world type of vibes, which I love. And I've traveled a long way to get here. So we're gonna see what we can find here. This gas station is built into this, the rock. This does require some off-roading. I'm hoping this experience will be otherworldly. I'm stopping just to check um, the state of the sand and if I should keep going. It's pretty compact. So we're just gonna drive along this trail and see if we can make our way there. Wow, this is crazy. here we are on a different planet this is not earth anymore let's get a closer look but first let's do a little zoom out Like, I love it. I want to live here. And tonight, we're going to sleep on the moon. We're going to find a place that looks like space to sleep at overnight. And that'll be really cool. In order to truly appreciate, you have to walk around it. It's hard to film on just with my camera, which is why it's handy to have a drone. So amazing. Talk about being out in the middle of nowhere. I'm certainly that. Maybe not the moon, maybe Mars or something. I don't know. This is amazing though. There's so much space and it's just me out here on the on Mars. And Yuki handled the trails just, well, she's hot. She handled them just right. These are the times that make the journey and everything just worth it. Like these are, this is my favorite types of places. And I just love sci-fi vibes. As you guys may know, if you follow my Instagram or anything, I love cyberpunk, sci-fi, dystopian, apocalyptic. So we're gonna sleep here tonight and um, move along into the supernatural. So the first stop that I have planned is a haunted hike. A lot of people have died on this hike and I have to re-research when I have internet why. All I know is that it's supposedly haunted. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna head up into Utah. So it's gonna get colder. I wanted to come down here first just to get the last bits of warmness, but we're gonna get back down to 60s and 50s weather probably. But we're also gonna get into more green. We can transition from the desert to the green now and 
possibly after visiting these haunted places, take the long, long, long trip back east and see what we can get up into there. Uh, leave any comments if you have ideas about eastern USA adventures. lovely stay down near Hanksville and staying on Mars basically it was amazing it was just so quiet and peaceful but I, I came out and now I am around the helper area and I'm down this road that's a damaged road so I'd be careful driving on it but this is gonna take me towards Spring Canyon now this is a ghost town that we're going to the story behind this and why it's haunted there are a lot of stories about this one lady. She supposedly haunts the mining area here. They had a lot of superstitions back in the day that women were not allowed near mines that would cause a lot of bad luck and a lot of bad things to happen. So they were very superstitious about that. So the story behind this makes it all the more told because it's a woman. There's a lot of different theories of how she died, but basically um, I believe she killed herself after her children and husband died. But I'll give you a one or two of the, the stories. There's probably nothing out there except some rundown buildings or something, and it's not a site where people go to, so I don't know what I'm going to find. This road's just some random mountain road. I'm trying to find the spirits of the Spring Canyon. I think the scariest part about this place, and I think this is pretty much the uh, part of the town is that I'm out in the middle of nowhere with no signal and if some random strange man showed up, I would be absolutely terrified. We're gonna continue on down the road and see what we can find up there. I'm not afraid of ghosts, I'm afraid of men. <laughs> you can see the layout of the whole town right here. Look at this. This is actually really cool. Um, ghost town is actually called La Tuda. It's not a town anymore because it's a ghost town. <laughs> but um, supposedly this is the area kind of around a mining office where she typically haunts. Uh, not this structure, but somewhere very close to around here is where she supposedly is. I'd say the feeling around here is, is eerie only because I know. I think sometimes, a lot of the times, people make up ghosts and those types of feelings because they already know going into it, you know? but if I didn't have any idea, then I don't think it would be eerie. The white lady's husband's death remains a mystery. Some say he died in a mine accident, others say he was poisoned, but left without compensation, she faced destitution with her infant child. Some think her baby was kidnapped and drowned, others say she killed the child herself to spare it from starvation. The mining camp, once home to about 400, echoed with tales of her despair. Stories diverge about her death. Some claim she was crushed in a rock slide or avalanche. One story says she confronted the mining officials about her husband's death and was so angry after that she drove recklessly and crashed. The same conclusion persists though her tormented spirit, forever restless, roams the mining towns. A chilling reminder of the brutal nature of history, especially mining history. So this is the biggest structure that I've seen. Now there's no trespassing signs, so I'm, I'm not gonna go in, but I'm just gonna look around it. This is history. I mean, if I get in trouble for looking at history, hopefully they'll appreciate that I've, I didn't touch it and I didn't go in. Yeah, this place is kind of creepy. <laughs> I don't like ghost hunting, it's not my thing especially when I'm like doing it alone. Not that I believe in ghosts, but you, you work yourself up, you know? Right, I hear a weird noise. I'm gonna go. <laughs> I think it's just a bird. I wouldn't want to sleep out here. Let's just say that. Like, I wouldn't want to sleep around any places that supposedly are haunted because I would work myself up being alone somewhere. That's where I get like weird about you know, mostly like actual people. Yeah, it's kind of creepy here, let's go. 
Okay, this is very strange. There's just a random like grave right here. And her name is Victoria. And she died on June 4th, which is my birthday. That's so weird. Start this hike to get to the hot springs. I had to drive an hour and a half to get here after the ghost town, so it's not in the same area. But I wanted to do this today before it gets dark. love cold plunges. They feel so much better for my body. I did a cold plunge after I went to the hot, I sat in the hot spring, which smelled so bad. I still smell like sulfur. And then I did a cold plunge, made my body feel amazing. With hot springs, they're usually really crowded if they're free. And I just don't like it, unless you go really early in the morning, which I haven't done but yet. I wanted to show you my camp spot for the night. Not too bad. And I'm the only one here. My I'm a ghost, a shadow at most. My love, Right, we are here at the most haunted nature trail in all of Utah. Maybe even the world. No, I don't know about that. I'm not going to spit facts that I don't know about. Also, you can't really factually say something's haunted more than another place because haunting isn't factual. Um, I'm going to go and try out this trail during the daytime because in the evening is when it gets more dangerous to do and I don't want to be out there at dark. And I would never be on any hiking trail at dark. Any hiking trail would be freaky at dark. I specifically came to this trail because I think it is the most haunted one in the state. So this is a beautiful hike. The reason for the hauntings here, supposedly, historically and in recent history, a lot of people have died here. late 1800s when the Mormon military came to settle here. They killed at least 70 Native Americans here over land. Throughout time, murders have happened. A lot of rock climbers have fallen and died here. Hikers apparently have gone missing. So it is a beautiful hike, but knowing the history of it, it makes it quite you know, sad. The most common haunting people see is a man from like the 70s running diagonally like, down the hill and smiling and then disappearing. Running in a way that's impossible. A lot of these things happen in bad weather or after dark, which of course, that's where all the hauntings happen, right? Which leads me to believe that it's mostly in people's heads. Some people have reported hearing drums, but if I didn't know the history and things about this trail, I'd be none the wiser. I don't feel anything, but I'm not really that intuitive like that. <laughs> Who knows? Maybe this trail will prove me wrong. 
Sorry, you know I'm always gonna give you a realistic take. I can't help it. I'm now in over two miles, pretty remote now. I have no cell service. One thing about this hike is it's all uphill. I guess we'll head back now. The next and final destination for this video is the haunted campground by the lake. And it is quite a bit out in the middle of nowhere, so we're gonna have to do some driving to get there. Well, it is beautiful weather, of course, so of course the ghosts wouldn't come out in beautiful weather. We are on our way and there is a slight change of plans. I don't know if this is for the better or for the worse for you guys. I'd like to know your opinion on what, what you would have preferred. Now what's going to happen, instead of going to the Haunted Moon Lake, I'm going to the area of Skinwalker Ranch. Now what interests you more? What sounds more appealing? The ghost of a haunted child at a lake or paranormal extraterrestrial happenings, uh, Native American legends of Skinwalkers near Skinwalker Ranch. Which one would you have preferred? For me personally, I think the little girl by the lake is a little bit more creepy. I have not done any type of UFO, extraterrestrial, paranormal, creepy stuff like that. So we've done the haunting stuff. I figured why not get as legally close to Skinwalker Ranch as we can while we're out here and while we're going in that direction. It's a very mysterious ranch that is not open to the public. There's supposedly a lot of happenings there that are very unexplainable and um, mysterious and eerie and creepy. And a lot of people spot a lot of UFOs and extraterrestrial activity over there. I have not watched like the TV shows and stuff on it. One of the things is maybe technical issues that people have there or random illnesses. The reason that I'm not going to Moon Lake, it is it's quite way out in the way and I kind of had trouble because the campground there was closed, but there is free camping there. And I realized it a little bit too late before I booked the campground near Skinwalker Ranch. So we'll save Moon Lake for a different time, basically. The thing there was that the lake is haunted by a, a young child on the lake. People have reported a lot of sightings of her. Apparently Moon Lake is a very haunted campground. But we're gonna try another haunted campground. I don't know if you consider it haunted. We're gonna say haunted by aliens. <laughs> Take me home, is what I say. Come and get me. <laughs> That's where we're headed today. Oh, it is really hot. It's crazy how this morning, last night, it was like freezing. There's frost in my windows. And now I'm just like boiling. Okay, so I'm at the UFO campground right beside Skinwalker Ranch. It's so close that it's the closest you can legally get. I was speaking with the woman who runs yeah. the campground and I was just asking her, you know, you know, what's up with this? I've never seen the show, you know? And I feel like everybody who probably comes here has seen the show and that's the whole point. But I like to go in things ignorant. I like to be ignorant. <laughs> just so I can experience things authentically. So I have no idea about the, the happenings. I've read a general thing online of what it is, like paranormal alien type of stuff, but I don't believe it. And I asked, I even asked the owner of, of this campground, you live near here, what have you experienced? And she's like, well, lights in the sky, but otherwise, you know what? I don't think too much about it, not really anything. I'm like, people just want something to believe in. Doesn't matter what it is, just anything, apparently. There's kind of like radiation or something. What we're going to do though, is we're going to drive to it and go right up to the, the area. This is the closest spot you can le legally get because this is travel land number one and you're not allowed anywhere near the Skinwalker Ranch. You can't just, free, you can't freely camp anywhere. Shade, <laughs> I need shade. This area is supposedly cursed. So right now I feel nothing. <laughs> just like I've felt this whole video. It was, should I make a series on, skeptical girl goes into all these paranormal places and feels nothing <laughs> because I feel like that's what would happen. This is why I don't make these kind of videos because I don't believe in it, but I don't want to spoil the fun.
this is the closest you can get to right outside the ranch. I had to drive 20 minutes around just because all of the private roads and all of the closures of the gates just to get to the entrance here. But where my campground is actually closer probably. But that's the gate down there. Comment below if you've seen the show. I don't know anything about it. I really don't. I don't feel anything different. It's very peaceful around here. There's not really much to see. But I wanted to at least go here, say I did it, show you guys. This is Skinwalker Ranch. So yeah, I think this fence line right here is the boundary. It wouldn't make scientific sense for it to be paranormal if the paranormal activity didn't extend to the surrounding area because if there was radiation, if there was mutations, if there was alien activity, it wouldn't be secluded to just one little property where the property lines end. It wouldn't. That's not scientific. I just am trying to justify the $40 I spent to stay at this camp spot. down soon. I'm so tired. I didn't sleep a wink last night. It was it was very, very cold. Um, yeah, we'll just see. So far it's been peaceful. I'm reading this book. It's called Flow. It's really good so far. I'm really tired so it's hard to like retain. It's I have debunked the Skinwalker Ranch for you. Yeah. Well, in my mind, I had the most restful night's sleep. Probably the most restful night's sleep out of all the camping spots that I've slept at. I think because of the tent, and I was able to just stretch out a lot easier. The drama you wanted to hear, but I slept real well. Except for in the middle of the night, it got windy. It cannot be in any wind because it goes I think the takeaway of this video is that people are going to believe what they want to believe and that's their reality and that's if it's fun for them then it's fun and i'm not going to get in the way of anybody's fun in terms of reasons to be scared of things you shouldn't be and it's fun to listen to stories and hear the history of places imagine what things may have been like or imagine these people as real people or these things as real things i'm not here to crush people's dreams but when it comes to paranormal things I'm not convinced. Keep on imagining, keep on playing, keep on wondering and being curious and learning and experiencing especially. Because this has been very fun for me. It's a little scavenger hunt for me. Do stay extraterrestrial if you'd like. Stay in reality, stay wherever you like. We're gonna stay moving. I'll see you in the next video. You better come.